Good morning and welcome to the Media Speaks Live, a Saturday morning news show. I'm D. Lake for Prez. David Lake reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. I'm joined this morning by Sam I.B. Adiganji, Sam of the Correct Views and the Band Passing Time, Samuel. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Saturday edition. Great to have you here, Sam. And we're also joined by Anne Marie. Anne, how are you doing? Hey, good. Awesome. We're going to get started this morning talking about politics and what's been going on. I mean, all this week was the uh, RNC convention with the Republicans. Donald Trump has been nominated the uh, Republican presidential uh, candidate, and he is joined on the ticket by Mike Pence, his VP. Uh, we just learned uh, last night, this morning, that Hillary Clinton has chosen Timothy Kane as her vice presidential running mate on the Democrat ticket, and their convention kicks off on Monday. Um, how about we start with Anne-Marie, and uh, can we just get some of your thoughts about the VP selections? How do you feel about them? I know, I know, you, I know a little bit about your Mike Pence feelings. Why don't we start with that? Go ahead. Well, Mike Pence, he seems like he's ultra right wing. Um, he supported a bill to legalize discrimination against Americans, that Religious Freedom Act. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that was the intention behind it, and it was also amended later, but yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Right. Well, I feel, well, that bill was, I mean, signed it, and that was to, for me, I know you're saying he amended it, which is true, but um, it was to discriminate against, you know, against people's, like, if it goes against your religious uh, beliefs. That's basically... Yeah, it wasn't meant to discriminate. It was meant to protect people's religious right, where if they didn't want to bake a cake for Sam because he has long hair and tattoos, then that's their... They feel that that's against their, uh, you know, they don't like that, so they don't have to bake Sam a cake. How, how do you feel about that, Sam? I mean, am I discriminating against you? I, I don't think anybody has to do anything for anyone else at all. I've been against that since day one. Um, I actually thought that Pence wasn't all that conservative, considering there's he. He's iffy on NAFTA, and he's iffy, iffy on immigration is my problem with him. Uh, when I listened to his speech, he seemed rather middle American. Sort of, I, I got kind of the opposite feeling that Anne Marie got. I didn't think he was all that much of a conservative. He seems agreeable enough. All right. Well, maybe he's coming around. I mean, he, uh, him and Donald Trump are getting to know one another and, you know, that, that sort of thing. I mean, they're still filling each other out. They're still, of course, uh, both parties want to align with the platform of their particular party, Democrat, Republican. Um, Sam, can I get your thoughts real quick on the Trump-Pence logo? Because I think it's really lame. But how do you feel about this logo right here? <laughs> the the T penetrating the P? How do you feel about it? The Trumpus, the Trumpus will sound. The trumpets, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the trumpets, trumpets. Uh, Hillary Clinton now walks with a cane. Ah. Ah ha 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 ha. All right. Well, there's Clinton Kane. I mean, uh, I think Emory had some more on Pence. And uh, how do you feel about uh, Kane as well, uh, Emory? I mean, are these good picks or not? Oh. Uh. Well, it's, Pence is good for Trump because he wants to, you know, like I said before, like he wants to energize and galvanize his uh, Tea Party ultra to the right Republicans. And that's who he appeals to. And Pence is to the right. He's like a, a monster child of like Dick Cheney and like Dan Quayle. I mean, he is very much to the right. Um, I do think that that's total BS, what you said, D Lake, before. I think that that is discriminating against people. If you're a business and you're not, if you're going to blame it on your religious beliefs and you're not going to serve somebody, that goes against the 14th Amendment 
and the president of the United States and the vice president should definitely be for equal rights of all people. And I'm really, that's called bigotry. That is called bigotry. Um, you know, you're basing it on the Bible. And I'm really sick of bigots blaming the Bible for their own bigotry. And I'm, I'm offended by it. Yeah, but there's Christians that are offended by the fact that they don't respect the fact that the Bible is right. That's also offensive. Well, let me just say this. Yeah, um, I mean, there, people can be offended uh, for different reasons than just one reason. Okay, I mean, well, obviously, then, she's calling me out using the 14th Amendment. I, what defense do I have? I believe in the Constitution, you know? I mean, we have to follow the Constitution. Well, you want to not be discriminated against. And let me just say this. Does Mike well, I'm Pence discriminated against have, all the time. Does he have... Uh, bacon cheeseburgers? Does he mix dairy with um, with meat? In the yeah. Bible, it says you shouldn't do that. Um, no, because in, you in know, the, uh, you have to understand, back then, Anne Marie, back then, you couldn't. That's what people miss about the Bible. Back then, mixing dairy with meat was not a real bright idea because they weren't able to purify much of the dairy, and a lot of times, mixing, mixing it with meat at that time was not the greatest idea. It also goes back to where the Bible says that you weren't allowed to do blood transfusion. That's because the Bible was talking to a bunch of farmers in a field prior to the knowledge of what a germ was. So the idea that you should give blood transfusions when you're a Hebrew farmer in a field is probably not a, a wonderful idea. Uh, when it says in the Bible that women were not allowed to, to speak at church, that's because women were not allowed to read at the time. So the idea that somebody's going to teach you that doesn't know how to read is probably not a great idea. Some of that doesn't apply now. Well, this is the thing about this Religious Freedom Act, and this Mike Pence signed it. It was very vague. It said if it goes against your religious belief, I agree with you that. have to screw these people. And let me just say this. Then people are picking and choosing. Yes, I don't care. That's fine. They can pick and choose. Bible they want to follow. So he's listen. This was all because of uh, you know gay people. They don't want to serve gay people. They're picking and choosing. But they shouldn't have to in the Bible. It. He probably has barbecue pork. He probably has shellfish. It says in the Bible, uh, you uh, eating shellfish is an abomination. Yeah, and eating, self, and eating, eating, eating shellfish probably isn't such a good idea. Look up how many people die of it every year. It's one of the few foods that if you're allergic to it, will kill you on the spot. But it's your freedom to eat that. And it's, it's your freedom, freedom to tell somebody to get the fuck out of your store, too. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, I mean, it it's, it's, it's your, your store. store. It's your store. store. You have the right to refuse store. service. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. You want the governor, the government to be allowed to discriminate, to say, yes, it's okay to discriminate against no, other but, people? No, but individual people can if they wish. People are not the government. I mean, the people in Indiana, the people in Indiana wanted the state government to protect their rights, and they felt their rights were being threatened. They put the law in, but then other groups said, this is discrimination. This, this is, you know, we're being discriminated against. He, am oh. he amended that. He amended that. That, that, that was Listen, like Jan two or three years ago. Jan now he's Brewer the vice president. To, Jan Brewer tried to do this before. She vetoed it. Jan Brewer vetoed it. Now, you know that Jan Brewer and Obama did not get along. They were on the opposite sides of the field, and she even vetoed it. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's discrimination. And and you guys really should be against this because it goes against. Like, you're supposed to be libertarian. We're supposed to be for. Uh, yeah, libertarian I, meaning that if I don't I, want somebody in my store based on whatever reason I have, then they can kindly leave, and they can do the same to me. If they, I, they're, no, they're, that's, that's fine. It, There's that. I don't care if someone, an individual, doesn't want me in their store. I guarantee. Have you seen what uh, Steven Crowder has done? He's He's been going to uh, Muslim bakeries and asking for a gay cake. Hell no. They don't want to do it. And they won't. And they shouldn't have to. Yeah, they don't do that at the Muslim. They, they're, they just, 
They just they kindly ask you to leave. They're not going to do it. Like a gay cake. They just ask you to leave. Yeah, that's fine. That's their right to do so. And also, Pence, the other thing about him, he would outlaw abortions and close Planned Parenthood. No. So way. he is very. Only like. He's very. I mean, he picked him for a reason. And even Trump, they said behind the scenes, wanted to change his mind um, at like the last like midnight hour. He kind of wasn't like into this guy. Um, you know, I don't know if you heard about John Cage, you know, from Ohio here, but he came out and said that Trump's kids came out um, to vet him for VP. And Trump told him, um, well, Trump's kids came Trump out. Trump Jr., Donald, Donald Jr. Yeah, and he said, now this is according to Cassius, and, you know, he seems like a believable guy. Um, he was being vetted by the kids. Let's say Trump plans to delegate, this is what he was told, he says, that Trump plans to delegate all domestic and foreign policy to the VP, to the vice president. And he would make the VP the most powerful vice president in history. And then when mm -hmm. Kate asked the child, Trump's child, well, what would Trump do as president? His answer was to make America great again. So. Uh -huh. So they so they're saying that they were uh, the one of the Trump kids, Donald Jr., was offering the job of VP to uh, John Kasich. Said, "Hey, if you be the vice president, we'll make you the most vice powerful vice president. You'll have authority over this, that, and the other thing." Uh, obviously, he he didn't take the bait. He wasn't at the convention. I mean, he pulled a silent Ted Cruz. I mean, how did you guys feel this week about Ted Cruz's speech uh, where he was booed basically off the stage, people chanting, we want Trump, uh, when Ted Cruz, uh, you know, failed to endorse the candidate as was his pledge? I actually stuck up for Ted Cruz on that, and I'll tell you why. Um, when he made that promise, and I, keep in mind, I, I think what Trump did was absolutely hilarious. You mean when he signed the pledge? No, no, no. He, but but Cruz signed the pledge prior to when Trump sent out the meme regarding Cruz's wife. I think mm -hmm. the meme. I think that the meme, started but, with wait, the let me, Cruz. Let me finish. Let me finish. I think. I think Cruz the meme, can't put out the first meme, but okay. I, I think the meme was both hilarious and funny, and absolutely, I, I loved it. However. If someone sent out a meme like that about my wife, I probably wouldn't endorse them for president. If I was given such a prime time speech, I would say I support the ideals of Mr. Trump, and I personally do not support him as a person. I would have not worded it that way, but you know what I mean. I would have been more careful with it. But I don't like Lion Ted. I think Lion Ted would be a terrible president, but in this issue, I'm with Lion Ted. You don't endorse someone that that means your wife like that. That can't do it. I, I I give Ted a pass on that one issue, and only that one issue. I give Ted a pass. Okay. Well, how did you feel about it, Emery? Did 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 you see that? I saw it. Um, I'm I'm not really a fan of Ted Cruz at all. Um, but I can't stand I, I his face. He... I can't stand Ted Cruz's face. It's just so annoying. Yeah, he is annoying. And he's just trying to appeal to, you know, his supporters and, and just remind him that he's not for Trump. Um, you know, just in case Trump loses, then he could say, well, I didn't support this. But he is very... Yeah, so you basically supported Hillary Clinton. Thanks for nothing. Thanks, thanks for helping unify. I could, I could see Cruz going more Johnson, of which I haven't updated in a little bit, listeners. I could see him. Um, I, I <laughs> yeah, he see should him. have said that at the convention. Vote your conscience, Gary Johnson. Uh, that would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Sam, Sam, you were trying to be there on the floor at the RNC convention. I mean, you even talked to Rince Pre Priebus, and, like, how did that go? What happened? But you uh, said... Uh, Rince, Rince Priebus is one of the single worst things to ever happen to the Republican Party. First I wouldn't all, say that. First of, all, I wouldn't say that. first of all, the man claims that it's a big tent. 
But when I went up to the convention and talked to other people out on the street, for those of you that don't know, look up the correct views. I have probably 15 videos or more up from the goings on up there. Um, oh, that they, the, yeah, um, they, he, he claims it's a big tent. But I talked mm -hmm. to a lot of other people up there who were applying to get in and couldn't get in. The only people Priebus caters to are the very people that have already ruined and limited the growth of the Republican Party. Um, he has been particularly close-minded on... Now, Sam, you, Sam, you weren't a delegate. You, you, you no, weren't no, no, a delegate. I, no, you, no, we, I, you, you were trying to get in as press. I mean... Yeah, yeah, independent media passes, of which okay, okay. it was even listed as independent media pass. Okay. I was one of the first people to apply and got literally nothing. And then when I got a hold of uh, Prebus's office, he was equally useless. And I can tell you that when I talked to Trump's people about getting into the Trump rally, bam, called you back, talked to you. Trump's people had it taken care of within, ask my wife, who was snowboarding at the time, had it taken care of within five minutes. Bam, this is where you need to be, this is where you need to go, come on in. Um, when I went to um, the Libertarian uh, rally in, I think it was Streetsboro, for Johnson, none of this confusion, none of this chaos, but yet Priebus has made this a mess for everyone. I, I think the man is the worst leader the Republican Party has ever had. He's got a, okay. surge, he's got a surge right now. I don't know, Sam. I disagree with you. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, but let's take a look at your page on YouTube. Everyone right now, immediately get on your computers, go online, go to youtube.com forward slash the correct views. All one word there on the internet if you know what you're doing in the URL. And you will see some of Sam's latest videos where it looks like he is outside the convention. Sam talks to GOP convention people. Sam talks with a pro-Trump guy. Uh, I interviewed the presidential candidate again. Richard who, who, Duncan, who I have now affectionately named, get ready for it, Dickie Duncan. As you ever hear the limerick, when the frost, when the weather was hot and sticky, that was no time for Duncan Dickie. But now the frost is on the pumpkin. Now's the time for Dickie Duncan. I met Dickie Duncan. His name is Richard Duncan. I swear, I got to interview him on the street. He's running as the Independent Party pres for president. And did you, oh, independent party? That's awesome. And did you ask him if he's ever heard that particular limerick before? Or? No, I had not realized that his name was Dickie Duncan until later. I told my wife, I told my wife that I thought Duncan should run with somebody named Dickie. And she goes, well, his name's Richard. It's already Dickie. So, no, he, he is affectionately known on this show as Dickie Duncan. And uh, okay. what's, fun, what's funny is Dickie Duncan is on point. He is... Uh, he is really, really good. He's, with the gun issue, he had said, if someone breaks into your house, you should be allowed to blow them away. Um, okay. I, he, he, I've got... A, I with really, more I've, than eight rounds. More, yeah, and it should be allowed to hold more than eight rounds. Um, <laughs> the, uh, his, his traffic to my site, as you can see, nobody cares about him, unfortunately. And he actually seems like he'd be a decent choice. He came in... Uh. Well, I've never even I never even heard of him until today. But now that I know his name is Dicky Duncan, I'm 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 thinking about getting behind him. Dick, go Dicky. Uh, if you scroll down, I'm getting a lot of views on the arrests and on the uh, Gary Johnson uh, supporter. I think she's at like fifty some views. And the arrest, I did no, it's it's up. I'm sorry, it's up. I got the arrest. You got to scroll up. I I steered you wrong. Uh, the the arrest. Got, the arrest that happened at, uh, there it is, uh, the flag, flag burner arrest. It's got like 70 views. The oh. socialists who tried oh. to... Oh, oh, right here. Uh, GOP were... flag burner protest arrest part two of two. Uh, here's part one of two, it looks like. And um, Sam, can you speak to uh, some of the sentiment? Can, uh, basically, if you could summarize the people's view outside the convention and then... Talk briefly about the arrest and and anything that you witnessed. That I, I want to hear about it. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, the 
the main thing I noticed was this, and I can't underscore this enough because I think this is where the major divide in America is right now. Um, I, I have a job collecting signatures for a uh, for ballot initiatives. And they're state issues. I haven't, like, gone crazy and gone federal on the correct views or anything. But it's a state initiative to keep prescription drug laws, uh, drug costs down. And it's done by the state, not the feds, again. So I'm not, that's what we're supposed to be doing as states. So um, the Trump people tended not to be the nicest people in the world or the absolute nicest people in the world. Whereas the Bernie people all tend to be really, really nice and friendly. However, when you start talking about issues, almost everybody on the Trump side knows what's going on, knows that uh, Clinton uh, supported NAFTA. They know what's going on in the world. They know where the economy is. The people on the left, while they were nicer, were utterly clueless, did not know any of the things I just mentioned. Um, have been sold on who Donald Trump is only from the media, not not from anything based in fact or reality, just uh, whatever they feel like. And they seemed utterly lost in that regard. But those were the two big divides. The Bernie mm -hmm. people are a lot nicer. Um, and, but, but, you would call, but you would say that the Trump supporters seemed, in your opinion, to be... More informed? Way, way more informed. Way more informed. Okay, the, right. the, the left is voting with their heartstrings. They have no idea on any of the issues whatsoever. And um, could you, and could you maybe uh, narrate what we're looking at here in your rest video? Yeah, these are the red socialists. Uh, there were, there weren't. You could tell two things from the video. One is that they're lying. They're yelling right there that they're being assaulted. Now. I don't know about you, D. Like I don't know what things are like in California, but here in Ohio, if a police officer is fighting someone, the other police officers are not just leisurely walking by. These people set a flag on fire in the street, and I'm not necessarily against flag burning. You should be allowed to do it. If you do it, you're an idiot. You're I an idiot. hope you set yourself on fire and die of smoke inhalation, but that's there cool. There was the guy on Infowars that set himself on fire during this convention. <laughs> trying to set the flag on fire. But... Yeah. Um, but they, they're shouting there that they're being uh, that they were not being hurt. They were not going to be arrested unless they set the flag on fire, which you're not allowed to do because it wasn't even confined. They tried to set a fire in the middle of the street. You're not allowed to set a paper bag on fire in the middle of the street. They got fired for arson. They got arrested for arson, not for the flag burning. So they're lying. Uh, uh, but, okay. Second of all, you notice there's an extreme lack of their people anywhere. Um, and I thought that was interesting because even the, the left has tried to separate themselves from these people. Um, the red socialists were, however, very talkative, and they at least knew what it was they supported. I have uh -huh. to give them credit. They're Marxists, and it's an awful idea. But they're not blind to what it is they believe in. They are at least informed. I will give them that. And, and, and to just to visualize and clarify, uh, if you can see my mouse moving, this young young kind of looking guy with maybe his hat backwards, it's kind of hard to see, but it looks like he has some red print on the front of his shirt, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a gold chain or something, and he's standing next to another person. There's, he, he seems to have his hands behind his back. Is that what's going on, Sam? This is the guy getting arrested? Yeah, there are, there are four or five of them. They're all being read their rights while they chant. Uh, but in this instance, the police did absolutely nothing wrong. And uh, you were right. You were right there, Sam. How did you get so close? Uh, I was. I might just kind of weaseled my way up, if you were. Um, I've been doing this for so long with the views now that I uh, pretty much anything I have to do to get to the front of something I have to film. Um, it, it's almost like weaving your way to the front of the uh, show at a mosh pit. You just have to duck and weave and sometimes give a polite nod. <laughs> and then after you... That's Sam has experience with ducking and weaving through massive crowds because he's been to a lot of concerts. Well, that, and I mean, what you do is if someone's kind of in your way and you're trying to film something and they're not, if you just sort of nudge in and then make it look like you stumbled, I'm dead serious. Very sorry about that. And then immediately start filming. 
usually people will be like, oh, no problem. It works really, really well. Okay, well, there you go. For anyone that's trying to be in the uh, thick also, of things. Also, in this video is a man, oh. I can't tell from his accent where he's from, but I got an interview with a uh, legal immigrant, and uh, he was talking about how there are other people from his own region that could be a danger to the country. And he's seen it firsthand. He talks about it on camera uh, during. Uh, did he flight. say where? He, did he say where he uh, legally immigrated from? Where, no, where he, he may have prior to when I found him. I heard him talking about halfway through the video you have up now, the flag burner protest, and okay. uh, he, he he's somewhere in that video. Mm -hmm. All right, and Anne Marie, how do you feel about uh, Sam's amazing uh, news coverage? Pretty good, huh? I watched a lot of them. I think I, I haven't watched maybe like the, the last few, but um, I did watch, um, even there was one with that pro-Trump guy, that one, yes. um, and he was talking about NAFTA and that, you know, Trump, you know, doesn't support NAFTA and things like that. Um, but I think like, I, I think some of the things he was saying he was getting wrong, that guy, but that's just my personal opinion. But um, I like the videos. I I thought that was really cool. All right. Well, Anne, it looks like you have a lot of material right there. Why don't you take us in our next direction? What what is it that you got there? So um, let's see. Well, it depends what direction you want to go. I mean, I usually when we do talk about NAFTA, I usually get stuck on the first point which is the importing of goods, and we've discussed that, like, to death, how, like, and uh, it was one of our last shows where we were talking about it, and we were talking about, like, Trump ties, and we were saying that, um, I think Sam was saying, well, that we were saying that the, t the if he puts a tax, an import tax, on these ties that are made in China, um, that would increase the price of these ties. And, um, that's where we left off, you know, talking about, you know, what Trump is planning on doing. But before Anne Marie starts, I want to mention, I don't know if either one of you have heard this, but I think Anne Marie is going to find it more interesting than ever. There is a third argument now to this, and I got it from Gary Johnson does not explain his points very well. And the person on my uh, video footage on the site that D-Lake was just at, she worded this beautifully. And if this really is what Gary wants to do, it's not such a bad idea. He is saying the reason that it's okay that he supports NAFTA is because he wants to get rid of the corporate tax. And if you get rid of the corporate tax, it would actually cost more to outsource than it would to, to stay here. And people, that will eliminate outsourcing in the stroke of a pen. Um, you know what? I'm still leaning Trump, but... Gary is not so far off on that. I just wanted to mention that because now, now Anne Marie, we've got a third option. <laughs> uh, no, well, well, I mean, I know we talked about the first part, which is importing a lot, and that Trump might, that, like, say, okay, now, like, I like to talk a lot about China because a lot of our factories, and, and I know that doesn't have anything to do with NAFTA, because NAFTA is like Mexico or, you know, but a lot of our jobs are going to China too. And Trump himself is making these scarves in China, and he's making, um, you know, we, we mentioned ties. We, we gave an example, but I definitely know he's making scarves. His daughter Ivanka is making scarves in China. But um, basically, we were saying last show that they would put a tax on these, you know, goods. But it's still cheaper to make these products in China. And increasing the price of these ties, you know, or scarves would increase the price for the consumer. And that's called inflation. And um, I know D. Lake said last time about this, he said, well, that's the market setting the price. But that's not the, that's not the market setting the price. That's the government then setting the price. Um, so anyway, um, you know, that's like the Department of Commerce. That's like a cabinet position. That's like in the executive branch of government. So, um, but anyway, the second point I always want to get to is the, uh, and I, 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 I guess we could get to that today if you want, is exporting.
the goods because the largest markets for the U.S. goods is Canada, Mexico, and then the third is China. And we export $1.26 billion of goods to China each year. So I wanted to give an example. Um, I looked it up, the top U.S. exports to China, and the number one export is soybeans. So it's $15 billion worth of soybeans we export to China. So that means all the, you know, soy sauce that they, and that's very popular over there, their soybeans that they're using in their soy sauce is coming from us, our farmers. And yeah, because we got the best. Right. Well, if we do start putting an import tax on these goods from China, and, and you know, like I said, they're still being made in China cheaply, but you know, we're we're bringing that over here and putting an import tax. The the Chinese could um, put duties, import duties on goods. You know, our goods. Do you see what I'm saying? That we're exporting to over there. So that would be like a new cycle of inflation. Um, well, they they could retaliate. They could put they could put if we if we can do that. Like Trump is saying, let's put import tax on these goods. Like he's making scarves over there or ties over there, and we're we're going to put the tax on that, and that increases the price over here of those ties. Remember we talked about that, and we we're saying that that would increase the price of these ties. And I was saying that that increasing the price is inflation, and and you were saying well the mark that's the market setting the price, and I was trying to say no that's the government setting the price, because we're putting an import tax on those goods, and those goods are still being made in China cheaply. Now my second point, which I never get to, is the same thing could be happening to us. We export these soybeans to China. They could do the same thing to us. They could say, well, you know what, well, well we can, can we go, can we dump all our steel in China and manipulate our currency as well? Huh? Why don't we have a trade imbalance with them where we are the ones that are making $500 billion a year instead of losing $500 billion a year? What I'm saying is if, yeah, if maybe, maybe there's some scarves made in China because the labor is so cheap there but wouldn't it be better if we just made them here and put Americans listen, to work I'm, making those damn scarves? But listen, they're not. They're still going to be made. Trump isn't saying that. He's saying that he would put an import tax on these scarves. No, no Anne Marie. But no, he, Anne Marie, he's doing that with the sole purpose of forcing them to make them here. It's a means to an end. It's not the end. No, I saw an interview with Trump, and Trump said this. This is exactly what Trump said. Trump said it is very difficult to make textiles here in America cheaply. He didn't say he was going to stop doing that. He said he was that it is cheaper to make it in China, and that no, he was going to import tax. But let me just finish because I never get to my point, my second point. But sure. if if he was saying though that he would put an import tax on these goods, like these scarves. They're being made right now in China. His own daughter is making these scarves in China. They're not going to stop that right now. They could. They could make them in a factory right now here, but they're not going to because it's cheaper to make them over there, and he's a businessman, and he wants to make a profit. So what he's saying is, well, what he's going to do is put an import tax and tax those goods, and when they bring them over here, well, that will increase the price of the ties. Now, what I'm saying is China can retaliate and they can say, well, we'll do the same thing. You're growing soybeans here. That's the number one exporting. This is my second point is exporting. So we export these soybeans right now. It's the number one thing we're exporting to China. They make tons of soy sauce with our soybeans. Now, if they do the same thing and put an import tax on our soybeans, that's going to increase the price of these soybeans, and that's going to put that's going to increase the price of the soybeans and put our farmers out of work. 
Why? Because they could grow these soybeans anywhere, and they can they could grow them cheaper somewhere else, and they won't buy them from the USA and our farmers. They'll buy them somewhere else, where they and and our farmers will go out of work. They they will be out of work. And there's other things we export to China. You should Google the top 10 U.S. exports to China. Number one, soybeans. Fifteen billion dollars. Fifteen billion dollars we're exporting our soybeans to China. The number two, civilian aircraft. Number three, cotton. Number four, copper materials. Number five, passenger vehicles. Six, aluminum materials. I'm just saying, there's a whole list. There's a top ten. Number ten, oh, nine is, uh, you know, eight is in electrical circuits, nine is corn, and ten is coal. But my point is, is that if we do this to these goods from other countries, I mean, I keep saying we live in a global economy. If we do this to other countries and put a tax or a tariff on imported goods, and we increase, that's going to increase the price of those goods in our country, which is called inflation, that leads, that's halfway to a recession. And if we export these goods, which we do do, that is going to harm our farmers. And the number one thing is soybeans. And you know how much they use soy sauce over there. They're mm -hmm. using our soybeans and our farmers and what, are right. And what's uh, China's number one uh, export to America? Steel? I have no idea, but according to Trump, he said that Clothes, textiles. Walmart, everything I mean, at Walmart, textiles, clothing. I guess, well, Trump said it's Nike. impossible to make them here. He did say that. He's talked about textiles. He, he, he said that he wants to make them here, and he's also said that what he wants to do when it comes to trade is deal one-on-one -on -one with countries. So there would be a America-Mexico trade pact. There would be a, an America-China trade pact one-on-one, -on -one, not trans-Pacific partnership with all these multiple countries and thousands of pages long that no one reads. Okay, if we have a one-on-one -on -one deal, then we're going to get an even, we're going to get an even balanced trade. Look, what what's the trade? Go to a carnival right now and what's the trade? I'll trade you uh, this many aluminum cans or this much soy bean for X amount of whatever you're going to give me. Okay, steel, aluminum. What? What about a car? But but if I'm giving you soybeans for a car, that's not fair. That's not a fair trade. That makes no sense. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what do you mean it doesn't that make sense? We have a trade imbalance with China of over five hundred billion dollars a year. We want it to be at zero, which means if we give you fifteen billion dollars of soybeans. We want fifteen billion dollars of your stuff in a fair trade. D Lake, I heard Trump in an interview with my own two ears. He did not say, I am going to make my scarves and my daughter's scarves here in America. He said it is very difficult to make them here in America. Why? Yes. Because it's cheaper to make them in China. He's continuing right now he's cheaper. making them in China. He's not making them here. He's making them over there. And what he mm -hmm. said that he would do was put a tax I mean, this is one of the things he said he, he would do. He does flip-flop a lot. But that one of the things we discussed on the show before was that he would put a tax on these goods that is going to increase yeah, the Yeah, if they don't fall in line. Tax. If they don't fall in line and deal with us fairly, that's what he will do. It's, it's the same thing when he says he'll walk away from the table. Look, we just want a fair deal, and that's what he'll do. Sam, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, he, I think he talked about how it's easier to make things in another country saying that that is part of the problem. He wasn't saying it's easier to make things in another country so we should keep doing it. He was saying that as a businessman, he sees that it's too expensive to make here, but once he is elected, he will change that so that those things will be made here. That's the whole reason we like them to happen. No, uh, and, and this is the thing. No, number one, he... He, I mean, listen, most of the Republicans were against increasing the minimum wage here in this country. And um, 
you know, if he can't control the minimum wage over there, of course, it, like, you know, that's why it's cheaper to make this stuff over there. These people will work, will work for pennies. But he, I mean, he has no control over that. And, and when you talk about trade, this is why people are trying to look at this TPP. This is why people are trying to look at this stuff because what can you do? You can't force another country. Uh, you can't even force China. They're horrible to their own people. You can't even tell them to have humanitarian you know, rights and, and help their own people. They're just so terrible to their own people. But So you certainly can't tell them, can you pay your workers a little bit more? Because that's the whole problem. If they paid their workers more, and they paid them the same price we pay our workers here, then it would be a little bit more expensive to make those goods over there. And I heard him say that he's not, I didn't hear him say, I will make these products here in America. I heard him say, it's very difficult for me to make these textiles. He was very specific about textiles here in America. It sounded like he was going to continue making them in China. And that was one of his plans, was to put an import tax. Now, what I'm saying is, you put an import tax on goods coming into this country, and it, that increases the price, which causes inflation. China could do the same thing and retaliate and say, well, we'll put an import tax on your soybeans. And we'll get them somewhere else. Because it would be more expensive then to get soybeans from America. They so can then grow we'll have a trade. So then we'll have a trade war. You're going to put our farmers out of work. You're going to put our farmers. Our, you want to put our farmers out of work? It just doesn't make sense. Okay, that's what I'm saying to you. It just doesn't make sense. He can't do these we, things. We're promising. We can have our soybean producing farms producing soybeans for us. Why we don't we buy, buy them as much. We no, don't no, buy no, them as much. In China, no, no, they're buying no, no. fifteen billion dollars. We don't buy enough soybeans. Well, yeah, we don't buy fifteen but, billion dollars worth of soybeans here. But the point is, that obviously, any 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 farm can have that. So if you're growing soybeans you're in the U.S., you have to be growing something else. So they can maybe they should go to the point of other other. Let America go to the point of other. Whoa, 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 so, 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 so. Sam, I don't know what's going on, but you are echoing like crazy. Is that, Amory, is that your volume? Or, I think it's me. Oh, yeah. I kind of have him frozen. I, Sam froze for me. Oh, there we go. That's probably fixed. Okay, no. Okay. I, I was, the, 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 such is the ways of the internet are listening. Um, if you have food being grown in America, why are we why are we importing beef from England? Why is it if there's a bad cow scare in Asia, we're worried about it? Trump is saying, why aren't we growing most of our food for us? And then if another country wants to buy it, by all means, great. Certainly, if a famine hits some country, we're not we're not vile people. You send them free food, that, that's fine. But it's um, why are we why are we in these ridiculous agreements? Let those soy farmers grow food for us. Well, we, we don't make, like, we don't eat, like, $15 billion worth of soybeans. Over there, they're buying it. And then the second thing is, like, I mean, I, I know, like, a few years ago, Japan, we wanted Japan to buy our beef. And because of our mad cow disease, they wouldn't buy our beef. And that our our yeah, our that's an awful idea for, yeah, for them too. I mean, for England to be involved in this is a bad idea. Uh, each country but this is should why really even take care of its own affairs much better than they do. This one world government that we're heading to is just a bad idea. Um, and for one of the reasons I would say it's a bad idea. I think that's uh, Trump's dominant winning theme is that he is for Americanism and not globalism. Uh, Sam, it sounded like you were headed in that direction. Right. In that direction, yeah. And I think there's one other thing that people don't notice. And well, I think they notice it, but they don't say it, because you're not supposed to say it, but it's true. Take a um, hundred random people off the street, put them in a room where they have an all-you-can-eat buffet, and let them chill. When you come back in three hours and they're all full, most, but not all, of the white people and black people will have branched off and got into their own group, as well as Asians or whatever. They tend to chill with their own people. Um, you'll see people mingling back and forth from each group. They've done this in a, social, in a psychological experiment before. 
And there was no animosity. Everybody left the party reporting they had a wonderful time. They had a great time. But what it showed was people tended to gravitate towards their own cultures. One of the reasons the New World Order is such a bad idea is inherently people look out for themselves, which is okay as long as you don't abuse it. But what globalism is trying to do is to put us all in the same sandbox and pretend that nobody is going to have their own country's best interest at heart. And that just isn't true. Trump is saying he thinks every country should have their own best interest at heart. Uh, we should not engage in fighting each other, and we shouldn't let each other starve to death. Granted, we're America, so, I mean, we're going to help Guam. That's fine. But beyond that, you worry about your own country. And I think that that, at a bigger reason, is why. I don't think it's wrong that people generally gravitate toward their own culture. They just do. That's true, uh, but 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 on on the flip side, I've been the only white guy at a soul food restaurant, so I don't know what to tell you. Oh yeah, no, mean, no, no, that's not what I mean. That's not. What but I mean but I all. think they, I, but I think that, the, that I think that well, in the media, they try to peg uh, Trump as an isolationist. Even he says, you know, that he's not an isolationist. He is, but he is, a, a, like a nationalist in that he wants Americanism. You know, we have to look out for our people, like, first. And let me pause you, know? you like, because you're going to get a bunch of hate mail on the comment line. I ran into this. Good. I wish I would. I, ha I had to rephrase this on Twitter, because a lot of people don't know this. It is not bad to be a nationalist, but unfortunately, when someone hears the word nationalist, they think Nazi. It was not the nationalist part of Hitler that was dangerous. It was the fascist socialist part of Hitler. So when you hear the word nationalist, don't panic. Not a bad thing. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. People, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be called a Nazi. Is that yes. is that what's going to happen? People don't understand that you didn't just say fat. People people hear nationalism and they hear Nazi, which is funny. I, I noticed. That. No, we we need a national pride. Okay. Is that does that sound Nazi as well? I don't care. If you think that Trump is looking out for the best interests of Americans and our workers, then that is our farmers. And our farmers are growing these crops. And it's not just soybeans. Number nine on the list that we're exporting is corn. And we we are their customers. And if, if we increase, you know, if well, China... No, 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 you yeah, gonna put why, these why, out why should we even be engaged in this? Why, why aren't those corn farmers growing corn for us? Because they, these are their customers. You know, it's not just us. They are growing corn for us too. But they're also you're you're gonna take away all these customers in China. They can retaliate, do the same thing that Trump wants to do to their goods, and put Which a tax on them. Probably needs to happen a lot in the world. Yeah. Each world needs to start focusing on itself. This is gonna be a good thing. World. That is us. What about if you're a farmer? Do you want to take away China, fifteen billion dollars? Yes, they're selling some but, soybeans. But, but, that but, would make the, but that would make the market grow here because once China raised the rates on it, then they would start looking for other people, and the market here would grow, and you would simply grow it for the people here. The China will buy the soybeans from somewhere else and we'll lose, these farmers will be out of a job and inflation, the increase of price, leads to a recession which leads to unemployment. And our but farmers China would not, not be... Gonna have, China's not going to have such a time doing that. And they're already growing their own soybeans. No, but they can buy it from somewhere else. And right now they're buying yeah, it so from corn. They, some coal and other things. Like, listen, when you say Trump is going to look out for us and our and our workers, that is our workers, the coal workers, the coal miners. We're selling coal to China. We're selling soybeans. Our farmers, they want these customers, and and that is what China would do. They would retaliate if we're going to put tax on their goods, like no, Trump is saying. That, that is what they're going to do. Because what you just described is. We're going to lose some soybean business, and we get Apple back. That's a trade I'll take. We That's sell an absolute beans. trade I'll take. Do you if know we, if we make iPhones in the U.S. but less soybeans? I'll take that trade. Good call, Sam. How about 
how is that a good call? Number eight on the list of things we export is electronic integrated circuits for $1.7 billion. I yeah, mean, they're, they're using our circuits no from here. We're selling it to them. Listen, yeah, there's a give and take here. Look, you're not even addressing the trade. In, you're, you're talking about trade, but you're not talking about the imbalance at all. If we have a $500 billion imbalance, then that needs to be corrected immediately. And TPP doesn't address China's currency manipulation at all. And those are the things that need to be addressed. Now, China isn't exactly in the TPP. It's other uh, Asian countries. But China will, will sneak in through the back door by sending their products to the countries that we're dealing with with TPP. TPP is a bad – we don't want to get anywhere near it. And Hillary, Clinton, Hillary Clinton's uh, new vice presidential running mate, Kane, is all for the TPP. We didn't even really talk that much about Tim Kaine. I mean, Amory, you kind of went off a, a little bit on Pence, but how do you feel about Timothy Kaine, uh, Hillary Clinton's vice pre presidential pick? Well, I mean... Do you have I, thoughts on Kaine? Is, how does Kaine feel about... How, how, what, 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 how, is is Kane going to renegotiate the uh, the trade deals with China at all, or or he's just fine losing five hundred billion dollars a year is and letting Trump him sneak through the back door into TPP? What do you think? I don't see Trump saying that he's going to talk to China about making scarves. I mean, he said he's going to continue making these products over there in China. No, he's he going to talk to China history. about having a fair deal in the trade negotiation. It is a fair deal for him right now. He's making these things over there, not over here. And he said he's, he's saving money. He's making a profit, in fact, by making these things over there. So, I mean, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I, think that can, I, think that can fairly, I think that can fairly continue as long as uh, it's a good deal. I but think, uh, I think a better deal would be making the product right here in America, paying our workers uh, a good, uh, you know, wage for for doing that job you know they always talk about uh, jobs that Americans won't take I mean look I'll speak for myself but maybe Sam would agree that like you know we need we need a, a good paying job like right now immediately and if I have to start picking fucking grapes then maybe that's what it's gonna be but I'll do it how do you feel Sam I know you're not gonna pick grapes but I was mute now. No, and, and as somebody who has recently lost a uh, somewhere between twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollar a year job, it is painfully obvious uh, that we need we we don't have. For one thing, I have a degree in graphic arts. You find some graphic design jobs, but a lot of them pay almost nothing. And yet, when I was when I first got into this, it was one of the highest paid fields in. Um, in the country in terms of amount of business done. Um, we, we, we're sending everything to other countries to our own detriment. We are literally putting ourselves into an environment where everybody's a bartender or a waitress. We are going the wrong direction quickly here. I think we're sinking fast, Delay. Oh, Sam, you're making – after Trump's speech on Thursday, like Friday, like every, like, left media, they all said the same thing. It was so dark. It was dark and terrifying and apocalyptic. And I rewatched it. I'm like, it wasn't that dark. It had a lot of optimism to it. And then CNN took, like, four different polls, and while their talking heads were saying the opposite, all the polls showed that everyone – really thought the speech was good and positive and they all liked it and it encouraged a lot of people. And I mean, <laughs> see yeah, I, I would be encouraged by knowing that we're going to actually make something in this country again. That would be encouraging. Um, it would be encouraging to know that we don't have so many restrictions put on people when they want to open things like bars, restaurants, and nightclubs, that musicians and DJs like me could actually make a living because there aren't nine million restrictions. It would be nice if there were factories down the street where you could get a job instead of having them shuttered so that they're made in every country but ours. This is a nightmare. 
All right. Well, uh, next week is the kickoff of the DNC, their convention. And uh, Anne Maria, uh, we had a conversation last week, and I, I think I was, I think I was right because I said that Hillary would announce like after, like probably on Friday. Yes, her, you did her, say her, that. You were right. So I was right. Yes, you were. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear that I'm right. You know, I just wanted, I just want to point out real quick, Anne Marie, that I told you so. And also, uh, speaking of I told you so, uh, go back and watch uh, d Lake's videos on TheMediaSpeaks.com on YouTube where I was uh, endorsing Trump uh, back in, like, 2015. Go back even further when I was talking about he might be a good president back in 2012 when he was flirting with the idea of running. And uh, considering the fact that he was just nominated... Uh, the Republicans' presidential uh, candidate there, the front runner. Well, uh, you know, I just wanted to say, I told you guys, I told you, I told you so. But uh, <laughs> with the convention coming up and um, Timothy Kane, the vice presidential pick, and and uh, I'm sure a lot of Hollywood uh, actors and a bunch of left-leaning liberals, and apparently uh, the police are upset because. They're not really, like, having any cops there, but they're having a bunch of victims of police violence, like Eric Garner's uh, family and other people that uh, died at the hands of the police, their families and stuff. And uh, Emory, just, just real quick, and Sam, who, who was at the RNC convention and the independent, interviewed the independent presidential candidate, Dickie Duncan. I mean, how do you guys see the uh, DNC convention going down next week? What do you think, Ann? Well, I mean, I'm, I don't know how excited I am because I'm not a Hillary supporter and I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm just, I don't know uh, what are, I are, you, are you hoping that the Are you hoping that the Bernie people will feel the burn and try to burn, burn the place down, so to speak? But Bernie endorsed Hillary. So, I mean, either they're going to go with Hillary or Jill Stein. Yeah. And, you know... I, I really don't know what to do myself. I'm still, you know, up in the at air. Least about what I want to at least, at least Bernie didn't pull a Ted Cruz, but maybe he should have. Uh, the, Sam? The, the, the best part is that the moment we get off, Anne Marie is immediately going to look up Richard Duncan. I may have found Richard. You know what, Anne Marie? I may have found Richard Duncan a vote. <laughs> and oh it yeah. Be you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to look that up as well. But uh, Anne Marie, so Sam is saying that uh, you're leaning towards Dicky Duncan. Is that true for a president? <laughs> no. <laughs> Be like, we gotta get him on the show. Richard Duncan, the independent <laughs> candidate for president. He, his business card says he came in tenth on in 2012 on a budget of five thousand dollars. Okay. Did did he, he came he came in ahead of uh, Vermin Supreme? I don't know, but I bet you he came. Did he get uh, more votes, uh, votes than Vermin Supreme, the guy that wears a boot on his head and uh, offers the the country, everyone in the country, a free pony? And he he promotes uh, he promotes uh, everyone brushing their teeth and all that. Yeah, all that guy. I forgot about him. Yeah. No, he's running again this year. I think one of these years is going to win if he keeps at it. <laughs> Be like for press. Thank you. <laughs> I, I cut off Anne Marie what she was saying. Yeah, I, I, oh no, I was done. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I want to be like you mentioned this, and if you guys can help me promote this for the next two days. So far, I'm doing terrible. Let me go. I I can't go to screen share. If you go to GoFundMe, GoFundMe.com, help us cover the DNC convention. Convention. Uh, Christelle and I are trying to raise a thousand dollars to go to the DNC. Uh, the breakdown of this is we're guessing two hundred dollars in gas, sixty to a hundred for a room, of which we're not going to be able to get one very close to Philly, so maybe gas will be more like two fifty. Uh, we're going to have to eat. We need to rent a little bit better camera than we have, and what left, what is left, pays for our rent. We. We expect to make about, I don't know, maybe $400 for a week's work. So we're not being greedy here. Uh, GoFundMe.com. Help us cover the DNC convention. We want to go out and about and into the streets and the areas around Pittsburgh, uh, excuse me, Philly, 
interview people, get everyone um, ex uh, informed on what's going on. So if you like the work that I do on my show, uh, please consider that. Uh, yeah, Sam, you're not exactly coming up first. It looks like other people have this idea. Sending Travis to the DNC, help Erica go to the DNC for Bernie, help me get to Philly for the DNC. That doesn't look yeah. like you, Sam. That's great, because I have nobody. Send, send no me to organize the DNC, Shy Ridley DNC, Sanders delegate something, Rusty's delegate fund for Bernie. Uh, it looks like most of these people aren't really, uh, you know, reporters like Sam. They look, they, they all look like Bernie supporters. They're like, send me to chair for Bernie. It's like, uh, I think Bernie is done. He's toast. He's, Ber he's Bernie toast. Well, well, so far we have zero dollars and zero. Sam, stuff. Uh, how can I narrow this search to find your thing? Uh, the correct uh, views or? Try it. Yes, yeah, that should come up, I would imagine. DNC convention, correct views. This is GoFundMe. This is this is what happens, friends. When you you like when you, when you go in. Oh, that's even better. When, when you when you go in it, and you uh. Can you find me on Twitter? Do you like it's on my Twitter account? But this is what uh, you get, okay. friends, when you go to GoFindMe.com. Go to Nobody, go, how about GoFindMe.com? How about that? Can you even find anybody on GoFundMe.com? That's great. There you go, friends. Do you like, like, do you like looking it up live on the air? I'm trying, bro. I can't find you. Uh, well. Thank you, GoFundMe. Yes, but it's, it's on my screen. That's the big thing. Correct views. I put in correct views and you, you didn't come up. Earth. As Dan looks this up, I do have some interesting news for everyone. Real quick, if you are leaning third party, again, um, my show is nothing if not fair. I voted Johnson last time. I interviewed Jim Gray. This time, he made me mad about NAFTA, and I said it on air. And he said that Hillary didn't commit a crime, which is hilarious, so I sent him a dunce cap. I did. I mailed my own candidate a dunce cap. Um, am I voting Trump this time? Most likely. However, I'm rooting for Johnson to get into the debates, and I'm asking everyone to do this. If someone calls and says, who are you voting for, even if you're voting for Hillary, even if you're voting for Trump, please hear me out. D. Lake, I'm asking you on air to cut this section into its own little piece for me the way you do. Okay. Friends, if somebody calls you on a pollster, even if you're not voting for Gary Johnson, say that you're voting for for Gary Johnson. My friend in California, Giselle, is a raging leftist. She would rather self-emulate herself in the middle of a busy freeway than vote for Gary Johnson. However, if a pollster calls her, she's blaming Johnson, and I'm telling you why. Johnson is sitting at 13%. Look up HeatStreet.com. Uh, riding high, 13%. Uh, the reason this matters is if he hits 15%, he is in the debates, and what you have just done is a lot of fun. Because now the two-party system that you Bernie fans dislike, that you Hillary fans dislike, hey, Trump fans, listen to me. I'm on your side. We hate this two-party system. I would say the same thing if it was Jill Stein. I'd rather eat live maggots than vote for Jill Stein. But if she was sitting at 13 <laughs> I would absolutely say I was voting for Stein when the pollster called because we have been looking for a third party to upset this since Perot. And Perot had trouble because they said he had no experience. Try saying that about Gary. Gary Johnson was a two-term governor who left his state with a surplus. Mm -hmm. This could be huge. Um, and this is the last thing I want to get to on him. This is from The Hill. It could be, but it's not going to be. But anyways, good. libertarian Johnson beating Trump and Clinton among active service troops. Um, Johnson, <laughs> Johnson sitting at thirty-eight point seven, while uh, Trump is thirty point nine, and Clinton is of course fourteen point one. So that we all know what they think. But among people who are in the military, Johnson's actually pulling ahead. Uh, this is oh, well, well, <laughs> that's interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think I think the reason that would be was because uh, there were they want to get somebody who is going to pull out of the Middle East. That, I think that's all with Trump. I don't think Trump did all that bad. It's just that Gary would pull out of the Middle East. Oh, uh, sorry, was, I was coughing but, there. But I just I just remember back in 2012 though that it was Ron Paul 
that was uh, yeah dominating uh, with the the, the uh, military support and and even you know the most m money contributions coming from the military. Ron Paul was, um, and I thought it was a big deal then, and I I think it is a big deal. And you're saying that. Gary Johnson is getting the most from the military this year? Uh, active military, yes. And, uh, so far, to, really? Hmm, uh, that's according, interesting. According to the Hill. And okay. uh, I want to say, that, that was, I can't underscore this enough. If he gets two more percent, let me turn this light on. It, it was all sunny a second ago. If he gets two percent more, and he, I ain't got electricity, I forgot. And he starts polling really, really high. Two percent more puts him at fifteen percent. That puts him on the debate stage. That puts a third party candidate on the debate stage, and it's somebody with a lot of political experience. So, friends, do your damnedest to make that happen. If you really think about what that means, even if you don't like Johnson, you're really gonna want to do that. What do you think? You're on mute, Delay. What do you think, Anne Marie? Oh, Anne -Marie? Well, I think that'd be great to have a third party and to actually have him on the debate stage. I mean, He's I think it would be away. great. He's two points away. Although I do want to say He's this. You, you want to talk about stress, Anne Marie. Imagine this kind of stress. The Libertarian Party launched in the, uh, started in the mid-70s. And for all these years, they have been trying and trying and trying to gain some traction. You're Gary Johnson, and since so many people don't like Trump and Hillary, they're looking at you. And it, the, 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 the stars just lined up for you if you're Gary Johnson. However, not liking Trump and Hillary is not going to get you elected. Now that they're looking at you, you can't burp fart or cross the street wrong. Everything <laughs> you may do or think is written down. And yeah, go ahead, Gary. Mess up the movement that is now on your back because everything that libertarians have tried to do now sort of rests on him because of the way the Trump-Hillary Trump thing. Could you imagine how stressful that must be? Oh, yeah, and he said that he, um, like, stopped smoking pot, like, leading up to this because, you know, in case he gets yes. that 3 o'clock phone call, he wants to be, like, alert. Yes. Uh, I think he said he had edibles, like, eight weeks ago. He had some edibles, but he's actually stopped smoking pot, um, and he... And he, I think he said also that he's on the ballot in like 48 states now. He's in all 50. He's got all 50. Oh, oh all 50. Okay, good. This is a big big year. And even though, I again, I, I really do think I'm leaning Trump this particular cycle, to say that I don't support Gary would be completely untrue. I, and this could be really, really, really interesting. I'm excited. I, I, I want him to hit that 15% really bad. Gary Johnson called Donald Trump a pussy. Did you ever think that we would be talking at four years ago, D. Lake, about Gary Johnson being within two points of debate stage? <laughs> four years ago, did you ever see that happening? I remember Anthony Court when he was pretending to be the uh, evil overlord. Remember Gary Johnson? <laughs> and lo and behold, four years later, he's two points out of the supreme. Severe, severe striking distance. This could be interesting. Yeah, courts the supreme leader. Hey, it could be very interesting. Well, we'll have to just wait and see. Um, Gary Johnson starting his... He's got the marijuana company. Hi. The other thing is I, I'm interested to see what he's going to do because people have greatly liked Weld, and he has a habit of picking good running mates because we liked Jim Gray a lot, too. Oh, yeah, Weld is his running mate, right? Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be. He won't be on the stage, but that's nice. Well, he's two points away. What do you see him, what do you see him doing? He's a man tied to no scandal. 
Like, I mean, really, what 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 could he possibly do to screw up at this point? Well, there you have it. If uh, Gary Johnson makes the debate stage, Sam will be able to tell well, like, that he told me so. Be like, be like, I'm sorry. What, there, no, you I, called it. You're calling I, it. I got a question, though, for you. Be like, would you do that, even though we're both voting Trump? If a pollster calls you, considering where our roots are, you and I both, wanting to shake up that establishment, are you going to say Johnson? I used to live in New Mexico, and, I, like, Johnson is, I mean, I like his principles and some of his policies and stuff, but I don't know, I just, I don't, I don't really feel in the same way. But would you do it to get him on the stage? If a pollster called you and said, hello, do you like me? Um, <laughs> who are you voting for in November? Would you, even though you're voting for Trump, would you Pinocchio and say Johnson just because you know the system needs shaken up? No, yeah. Sam, Sam, Sam. Just you're much more charitable than I am, Sam. I couldn't see myself doing that, but but thanks for asking. Oh, do you like? Oh, come you on. You missed the bigger picture. Okay. Right. Well, what do you, what do you have uh, this week in science, Samuel? What do you got? This Sam, science. <laughs> Today I was very, very excited about, only because it sort of proves what I've been saying for years. There's a belief that people who are creationists, of which I am, do not believe in evolution. That is half true. Mm -hmm. We do not believe that God created fish to become people. Things do not jump species. There is no proof of this ever happening. There's no bones. There's no... It didn't happen. However, things do change within their own species. Um, I read a study years ago on the peppered moth. It used to be the white moth. The reason it's now called the peppered moth is because when pollution started to make the the leaves that the, that the moth would hide on, a brown moth, excuse me, that they would hide on when they began to get more speckled. The moth adapted, and now they're speckled so that they match the leaves again. That's evolution inside of the species. There's macroevolution, means uh, I become a, a bird, or a bird becomes me. And then mm -hmm. there's microevolution, which we mm -hmm. creationists very much believe. Well, we are seeing it happen now. Uh, Washington Post are no males, these butterflies are evolving into a separate species. Now, that's that's a big word, the way they're doing that, because that implies that they're about to become a mammal. It's actually within its own species. Okay. Uh, it worded very poorly. It, mm. It's still a butterfly. They're beautiful, these man-eaters. In Nairobi, the heart of Kenya, within what scientists call the hybrid zone for butterflies, Two subspecies of the African queen have no males. That's because the females are infected with, infected with a bacterium called Spiroloplasma exadeti that kills 100% of the male offspring. The eggs don't hatch. A, but good Lord, if, if feminists could do that to us, the like, I mean, they'd be, they'd be, we'd have a world full of vaginas. They absolutely uh, do it. What's <laughs> worse, at least for the males, is that the female, that's, Female eggs hatch normally, and their dude brothers are among their first meals. Oh, that's, and they are feminists. Okay. The Daryl Hall and John Oates lyrics say it best. Oh, here she comes. She'll chew you up. She's a man-eater. She's a man-eater. But it says, that the lovely cannibal butterflies, says Richard French Constant, a professor of molecular, molecular natural history at the and, and Sam, I have it right here. I have it right here. This is the uh, African uh, man-eater butterfly. Yes, that's him. Uh -huh. um, Her. And many caterpillars, they said, do the same thing. But it says the microbe is fairly widespread. It's not known to have an effect on the pretty yellow-winged African queen butterfly that exists throughout East Asia. So mm. it's not happening to all of them. But it says it's, we tend to think of a new species coming about due to environmental changes. But here is clearly a microbe that is causing it. And again... So, this, so but you're saying that American butterflies are okay. Well, I, I believe so, yes, for the time being. Okay. Um, but it, I, right there, I think 
it, it proves what a lot of us creationists have said in that regard, that we are not closed-minded people that think, you know, things don't evolve or change. Uh, one of the major ones that we're also seeing is um, if you take a person who has not had a Western diet and give them the same diet that they have always had, there are studies that show that within a generation or two, it's uh, the, the offspring would be slightly bigger. They've done it with mice and whatnot. The, 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 even though the Western diet was never exposed to the other group, since the other group was the evolutionary uh, instinctiveness within people kicks in and makes the next offspring bigger. Um, the other one, too, is if you've ever known a large area where women gather. I was a DJ at an adult club for a long time. Their cycles are all over the place, but if the girl works there for any length of time, her cycle will begin to gravitate towards where most of the women are already ovulating and having a period. The reason for that is because in uh, ancient times, the, the female needed to be able to be able to breed, and if she was on the cycle when nobody else was, then she wouldn't have kids. So her body was created in such a way that it would adapt to the environment that it's in. This is a really big, big version of that with these butterflies. So that's your news from the science front. I thought it was really interesting. Even it's not in good space or anything. I was thrilled with that story when I heard it. Because very it good. Happen. It doesn't happen very often. You know what doesn't happen very often? Well, it probably does. But great segue in entertainment because what I had in entertainment, or well, it was one of the things in my back catalog, but uh, you just totally reminded me of it. No men beyond this point. Uh, it's a, let me go. It's like a uh, mockumentary, like a documentary, but it's not for real. It's like a fictional documentary so to speak, but there's no men beyond this point. In other words, uh, the women in the 1950s, Sam, uh, they, were, they were having virgin births, and uh, it, it started to become more prevalent, and more and more women were having, like, giving birth, but without having intercourse, and uh, at first the churches tried to deny it and all this other stuff, but then it became so prevalent that this guy that's in the movie, he's 39 years old, and he's the youngest living man that's still alive, and they put all the men in camps and women run the world, and uh, it basically became that all women have parthenogenesis where they give birth uh, without having sex, so they don't need the men anymore <laughs> in this fictional documentary. But the youngest uh, living man, 39 years old, is like a caretaker for the, or you know, he's like the butler helper at the, uh, at these ladies' house. And um, one day, the the women, uh, Emery, they started like attacking the men in in mass, and, and then they thought because of the evolution of the women that they were. Um, be becoming more aggressive, like taking on male traits, but it turns out that it was just PMS. And all the women in the world, and they, they're, they're all running all the governments now. They formed a new uh, government world committee of peace. They, they ended all war. But um, it turns out that, yeah, one day when they attacked, it, it was PMS, and so they created a monthly three-day holiday known as Menses. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about that, Emery? A holiday based on menses. Um, it's called menses. Sure. Yeah, it's a it's a monthly three day holiday in the future where there's where you know the men are all in camps, and then they the, the, there was a presidential memo that they were feeding the men estrogen, the girly hormone, and uh, the, the men tried to deny it. They went on a hunger strike for one day, um, so the men are pretty. Oh, pitiful. that's horrible. Yeah, I think, sometimes I they escape. They Sometimes they escape the, the plantation. <laughs> you what? You just want chocolate? 
Yeah, like when I have my time of the month, I just want like a bar of chocolate. So that yeah, would make no. me happy. The darker the better. <laughs> Dark chocolate is is real supposed to be really good for like headaches and just you know everything. I uh, love yeah, it. So I, yeah, I love the dark chocolate too. Um, but yeah, this this movie is really funny, and I don't want to give away too many of the surprises of it. But you should really check it out, Sam. How do you feel about it? Would you like to live in a world where uh, it's just all women and they, they don't even have sex anymore? They just but they do pair up and couple up because they still need sort of that affection. But um, yeah, it's really weird, and the, all the men just live it on the res uh, in like camps and stuff. It sounds like the strangest movie ever. Uh, it, it sounds like, unfortunately, what uh, a lot of feminists would want. It's odd because it used to be that male chauvinism was more of the problem in, like, the 20s and 30s. And now we've reached a point where this feminazi crap going on is sort of the problem now. So everything goes in circles. I it mean, kind of makes a mockery of, fe of like, feminazism. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I have to see it. I'll definitely yeah. have to see it. Yeah, um, I've been addicted to the Bates Motel lately. I, I didn't even know it was made. I found it on Popcorn Time. I didn't even know, and for those of you that want to know, allegedly, Popcorn Time is a free Netflix. Allegedly. Um, Bates Motel is wicked good, and it's creepy, particularly the lady that plays his mother, as far mm, as she's TV good. Actors, she is as good. As far as TV actors, yes, D. Like you're right. As far as TV actresses, she might be the best actress on regular television. She is amazing. His mm -hmm. mother is. She can be creepy, angry, sexy, inappropriately <laughs> sexy. I mean, because again, there was uh, there the Bates Motel series. Without giving too much away. Uh, no, you're not. You, you're not watching anything disgusting. So I, I, I'm not leading you down the path of yuck here. But she is mildly inappropriate towards her son in every way. Yeah. And uh, she does. Is that her? Yeah. That is yeah. Her. She. I don't know, she was um, just amazing. Mm -hmm. She. She's half the show. She's really a good actor. But look at this. She has so many different looks, too. And, yeah, but, I mean, I her character... Her, I, I've watched some, some of that Bates Motel and her character per, portrayal where yeah. she's, like, sexy but evil but nice but not... But, like, what is... You know, what's going on? And the, the young the young guy, too, that plays the uh, son. I mean, he's, like... He's, like... Uh, he is Norman Bates, you know? He's he's uh, Anthony Hopkins reincarnate or something, right? Yeah, he... he he did it almost as good as uh, with uh, as that as the original did, which is funny because like I showed my wife Psycho when I, we first met. I showed her both versions, including the remake. Oh yeah, that was your first date, huh? You you went and watched you watched Psycho yes. together. He <laughs> somehow forgot it, so I have to watch the original Psycho again. She doesn't. Mm. At Universal Studios, they have the Psycho House, but I it was. I uh, got to go to that. I got to go to that. I was telling her about it. It's a three-sided yeah. box. Yeah, and it's like a miniature. It's like a sixteen. Are they using scale. the same one? Are they using the same one? I um, I would imagine, but now you can't tell because computer you know generation has gotten so amazing, right? And have you seen any of this show, The Bates Motel? Uh, have you ever seen the movie Psycho? Uh, do you know what we're talking about, or are you totally clueless? Um, oh, sorry, I had my microphone on mute. Um, the, I think that had like Jamie Lee Curtis's mother in it. Psycho is that the one? Because I did see that. Uh, the original she, black and white now, Psycho. She's that's where she goes to the shower and she yes. screams. Yeah, I think that's Jamie Lee Curtis's mother that played that character of the woman that goes into the shower and screams. I believe so. I believe oh, so. Oh, okay. I think All right. that yeah. was the original one with her mother. I, I haven't seen the TV show. I'll have to check That's it out. That's why she was so good in, uh, what's her movie, Halloween, Sam? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's her daughter. Yeah. Well, plus, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I, Psycho is amazing. I, mm -hmm. I like Blackmail as much. If you've never seen Blackmail, I would say it's as good as Psycho. That's all I can say. That's all you need. Is it another uh, Alfred Hitchcock property? Yes. Or? And okay, very, yeah. And greatly underknown. Really, really creepy. All the that way uh, that document 
or uh, not Doc, that uh, that movie that the movie where uh, Anthony Hopkins plays uh, Alfred Hitchcock, and they talk about like I mean p- most of the movie is like the making of Psycho the movie within the movie where Anthony Hopkins is Alfred Hitchcock and like how how we all brought it and made it happen. Oh man, that's a great movie. Um, I have to look up what it's called. But Anne Marie, what do you have in entertainment this week? Oh, um... Have you seen or watched anything good lately? Anything like that? Or read? Um, let's see. I was kind of watching a lot of conspiracy videos this past week. They were Uh, popping up about, like, Elvis. And they were saying that Elvis... uh, Wait, wait, wait. I was going to look up this movie with Anthony Hopkins, but now I have to go to what Anne Marie is talking about because I saw that this week as well. And they, they the Elvis, Elvis might still be alive. Yeah, Anne Marie, go ahead. I think it said that he was a. Uh, the people believe that he's a pastor. Uh, Bob Joyce, I think his name is, and he sings like Elvis. And um, oh, Elvis. I thought you were talking about the gardener. Oh, I saw that too. The gardener that came over and walked over to people. He had like a big uh, beer belly, and they were saying that his finger, something about Elvis's finger. There, yeah, that I saw that. And, and they keep, and they keep showing a like a gif of uh, both of, of of like Elvis and the old guy walking, and they try to say they have the same like uh, cadence, maybe or what do you call that? Uh, yeah, they were. Ca- saying, um, yeah, so, so, that. Amory, what do you call that? When you, when uh, somebody's walking style, not like cadence, but uh, like a limp, like he's walking with a like a little. Well, limp. they they do say there's a slight limp, but your stride, it's like stride. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and they also said something about his finger, like something about Elvis's finger and this guy's finger. I I didn't really. It was like at the end of the article, um, and then they said. Then there was like comments. So then I went over to like the YouTube and I saw this Bob Joyce. And he sings. He's a pastor at this congregation. People are saying the gardener isn't the real Elvis. It's this pastor. His name is like Bob Joyce. So I, then I started watching that. Like you said, I get down like a rabbit hole. And then I start going from one conspiracy video to another. <laughs> oh, yeah? Wait, Elvis still alive, pastor. Let's see what that produces. His name is Bob Joyce, I think. B O B Joyce. Pastor Bob. Oh, this is still alive. Oh, this guy is Elvis? Pastor Bob? You, you should hear him sing. He really sounds like I know, really? I know, I know. He doesn't look 81, cause, um, but he does sound like Elvis. He has, like, his voice. And people are convinced. So I, The gardener <laughs> looks more like possibly Elvis than this guy. Yeah, he does. Sam, who looks more like old Elvis? Pastor Bob or the gardener? Who's the gardener? The gardener. This guy is—is is this guy old Elvis? And the—I think it's called your gait, or is that what it's called, Sam? When the style of your walking? Yeah. Your gait or something like that, right? Yeah, you gotta hear this Bob Joyce sing. You gotta hear this video of him singing because he sounds oh, yeah. like Elvis. No, he's saying he's Elvis. <laughs> no, well, he's not saying. He's not. I don't think either gentleman is saying that they're Elvis. Other people are saying that they are. Right. Right, Anne? Yeah, and when you hear him sing, this pastor, he really sounds like Elvis. I mean, he really does. Felix, give us some pastor No, no, you guys are going to have to look that up on your own because I'm not set up for sound. And also, like, our past few videos have been getting uh, strikes because, uh, well, not strikes, but warnings because I've been playing, like, videos and songs. Well, if, it's, if it's a pastor singing and it's not copyright. All right, all right, give me a second. You guys well, talk about well, Elvis well, for a well, second. Well, and I'll this up. I'm going to stay with music. Uh, have I told you about Slayer on the show? I think I had this up, but then I didn't get on last night. Breitbart.com. Uh, F-bomb coming, friends. So if you have virgin ears. Slayer frontman Tom Araya. People fucking die when guns are taken away. I love this. Fuck, I, I, it's it's he's the reason I don't normally like Slayer. Uh, I don't like his vocals that much. He doesn't do enough with his voice, and sometimes their uh, King his solos are rather sloppy. But having said that, they're one of the inventors of thrash metal, 
And to say that they're not important in the scope of things would definitely be uh, uh, not the case. They, they have written about political things forever. Uh, look up mandatory suicide about the Vietnam War. Uh, this is, uh, they're not a band that dabbles in politics. They're political people that dabble in music, if you, if you wanted to look at it that way. Uh, Slayer frontman Tom Araya delivered an impassioned speech about the importance of gun rights during a recent, co recent concert in Switzerland in which he stressed how private gun ownership allows a person to defend oneself and one's country. He broke the topic at the concert based in Switzerland's historic gun culture. Check this out, guys. He said, is it true that every household should own a rifle or a gun? No. I thought everybody was supposed to have a rifle or a gun in their home. It's not right. How else are you going to defend your country? Where you are in the world, you need to protect yourselves, not from each other, but from invaders. And you know what I'm talking about, right? You should be aware of your invaders. Now, keep in mind, he's talking to a country that is under mass rape from um, an, an Islamic invasion. Uh, you should be aware of your invaders. People come here to do you harm, and it's not right. Notice, he's not talking about the people that are coming there starving to death. You should be able to protect yourself and to defend your country. And that's the way it should be everywhere. Because when you don't have anything to protect yourself with or fellow your, your fellow countrymen, what happens? People fucking die. They do, don't they? Yeah. Did you see it going on? Because I did. He continued, I'm not going to name names, but you can see what's going on in other countries. Because they can't protect themselves. And that's what I'm talking about. Being able to protect yourself and your fellow countrymen and your fucking country. I'm being serious, man. This isn't a fucking joke. You know, it really sucks to know that other people die because you can't protect them. That fucking sucks. Uh, his comments, it says, came just after, weeks after Omar Mateen entered a gun-free nightclub in Orlando, Florida and shot 49 people to death. So, uh, Arias from Slayer, uh, on the right side on this one. Hey. Uh, and I, which is good because there's a video on there was a video on my channel where I ripped the man apart for being arrogant. So uh, towards Al Jorgensen of Ministry. So hey, I'm fair. Way to go, Tom. All right, all right. You guys go to mute because I got the volume turned up. In, okay. So we can play some of this. But Sam, uh, good, good reporting there. Um, apparently Elvis lives video footage of him singing in a church at age 78. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that Amory might be one of these people that like the video. Seems like she's been on a watching a bunch of these. And and did you have you seen this one? I didn't like. <laughs> what you didn't like it? Did you dislike it? All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh my god. I think it's him. What is that? It looks like a ghost in the corner there. What is that? Uh, it sounds like Elvis. He does? He's going. Yeah, he actually does. My, my parents love him. <laughs> Elvis definitely influenced the man. That's um, not um, we, okay, we let the video go there a little bit. I'm going to like this video. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anani from Anonymous, please uh, do not... Oh, you spelled Anonymous wrong. Oh, you're Anonymous. Uh, please, Anonymous, just don't tag... Don't flag this video, okay? Thank you. And the movie starring um, Anthony Hopkins as Alfred Hitchcock is... Simply titled Hitchcock. It's from 2012. Uh, oh, she's in the movie too. Uh, I love her. Helen. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's a good one. Everyone, check it out. Okay, thank you. Guys, go ahead. I gotta switch back to sound. I never heard of it. That's mind blowing to me. I had not heard of that movie at all. Interesting. You learn something new every day. So, Anne Marie. Yeah. Uh, on Facebook, you have to uh, you have to post the, the DNC link. Uh, I'll have to send it to you. Friends, you can find me at the correct views. Uh, YouTube.com/slash/the-correct-views. 
uh, if you can, uh, look me up on uh, GoFundMe. Uh, I'm also on uh, Tumblr. Nobody else is on Tumblr, so I'm easy to find. What's that? And I'm on Twitter. So, Never heard of it. Twitter. Twitter, 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 Twitter. I don't tweet, I crow, but I, I've got like, I don't know, I started like a couple weeks ago. I got 47 people following it on there. I want that to be 147, 547. Go, go to my Twitter and I uh, like it. Correct you, Sam DeGangi. Anne Marie, where can you be found? Right here on mediaspeaks.com on awesome. YouTube. <laughs> Sam, Sam does it. He rocks. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Oh, do you like? Where can you be found? Here on Butterfly Hill. <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna take us out there, right there, there, Sam. But thanks for giving me a quick spot. You can find me on YouTube. Look up David Lake. Look for the Captain America Shield. Oh yeah, Comic Con is going on this weekend. I wish I was there, but I'm here bringing the news to you. We talked about a lot of great stuff today. Trump, Pence versus Clinton, Kane, the convention. Sam's Amazing Butterfly Science, awesome entertainment news. Everyone check out the stuff that we were talking about. And also, I'm really looking forward to uh, Luke Cage on Netflix. And I just watched an amazing preview that I don't want to play. I don't want to get any more strikes on our videos. But check out our videos at YouTube.com, The Media Speaks. That's where you'll find us every week doing awesome videos like this one. Stay tuned next week for a much better show. What did you saw on your channel?